today we will perform buckling analysis in finite element software and we will perform buckling analysis of a thin plate that is made of steel and dimension of the plate is 300 mm and 30 mm and the thickness of the plate is 2 mm and if you see the boundary conditions boundary conditions is here one end is fixed and in other end we have roller type support that basically is present all degree freedom are restrained except your loading degree freedom in some book it is mentioned as a fixed fixed conditions but thing is that actually both end are not fixed if both end are fixed then we will not be able to apply the load because we cannot apply force conditions and displacement conditions in same degree freedom we cannot apply force conditions and the displacement conditions at the same degree freedom because if we first restrain it that means we are not allowing any deformation of the degree freedom or any displacement of the degree freedom and then if you apply the load that load is going to is the load is not going to be active because that degree freedom is already restrained so that force boundary conditions that also is called the Neumann boundary conditions and the displacement boundary conditions that are also known as rigid boundary conditions cannot be applied at the same degree freedom okay so here we'll say that one end is fixed and other and in other end and in other end we have one free degree freedom that is loading degree freedom and all other degree freedom are restrained so if we do the buckling analysis we will get you will observe you will observe that we will get one eigen value okay the buckling load that we obtain in fine tune analysis normally is to come as your eigen value times the applied load whatever the load we are applying okay that load times the eigen value is to be your buckling load and theoretically we can calculate Backing load that is your pi square ei by l square that l is here effective length so here we have both end are fixed so for our case our effective length will be 0.5 l so we'll see what is the buckling load as per theoretical calculations and what is the buckling load as per our fine river method okay so what we will do we'll try to obtain this type of buckling shape and we'll see whether find element can give this similar type of buckling shape or not and what is the buckling load okay so let us go to our find element model now here we are going to model a buckling of a thin square plate so it is very similar to buckling of a ruler the scale we use okay so here what we're going to do we're going to make the geometry here we choose cell and then we can choose extrusion process and we'll choose 300 mm length so here we are choosing your tuner wide so 30 30 mm wide 30 mm wide and length will be of length will be of 300 mm length will be of 300 mm here you can see this is very similar to our ruler that is 30 centimeter in length now find the property property we will consider as your elastic property that is your 200 gpa so if you convert it that will come 200 into 3 200 into 3 that is that means 200 that means 2e5 2e5 mpa and here position is 0.33 now here we are going to define this is as a cell homogeneous and here thickness will consider as your 2 mm now we'll define the section and metal property 
towards body. Next, we will go for assembly. Assembly here, we will consider independent type instances. Next, missing, we have to define seed, seed value. We have to define seed value. So here, I am defining seed by age. Basically, we are creating node number. The number we will provide as a 10. And length, and the length will provide is your 100. Now you can see what type of mesh or what type of element we have created. Now here you can see we have created a regular safe element. A regular safe element we have created. Now you have to go for step. So in this step, we'll define what type of analysis we want to perform. In the step, we'll define what type of analysis we want to perform. We want to perform buckling analysis. So you have to go for linear perturbation and then we have to choose buckling or buckle option. And here it is saying that number of eigenvalue. So here number of eigenvalue will be one. And here maximum number of iteration, maximum number of iteration will increase to your 100. So here you just see we can give more number of eigenvalue. We can request more number of eigenvalue. But it will increase your computational cost. But it will increase your computational cost. One more thing. Since we are interested to know how the first buckling mode look like. The first buckling mode is that mode where we required where we used to have buckling with minimum amount of load. First buckling mode is that load. First buckling mode is that mode where we require minimum amount of load to have the buckling. So since we are interested to see how the structure is to buckle, how the how this structure will have buckling. So what we are going to do? We will choose eigenvalue requested as one and maximum number of as hundred. And next we are going to apply the load. So in the loading, what are we going to do? We are going to create two boundary conditions at that two end. So at one end, we will fix, we will fix this option boundary, we will fix this boundary and we will choose end cluster option to fix it. And in the other end, we will apply and in the other end and in the other end, we will apply displacement type boundary conditions. Here we will apply displacement type boundary conditions. And what we are doing, we will we'll leave that loading degree freedom. We will leave loading degree freedom and we will have constant at other degree freedom. Since our Z direction is our loading degree freedom, so we are keeping U3 as free and we are constraining other degree freedom. So this is the way we will apply and displace bonding, displacement boundary conditions at other end. This is the way we will apply displacement and boundary conditions at other end. Now we will apply the load. Here we select create option. And then here we will apply the line load. Oh, sorry, here we will apply cell edge load. Here we will apply cell edge load. And we will select this cell edge. We will select the cell edge. And magnitude will keep 1. And here you can see we have divided, we have applied the loading. Here you can see we have applied the loading. Here you can see we have applied the loading. Here you can see we have applied the loading. Here you can see we have applied the loading. Now you have to see what else we have to do. We have defined part, we have defined property, we have defined assembly. Basically, here we have defined instances. We have defined what type of analysis we want to perform. And then we have defined loading also. We have none the missing. Now what are we going to do? We well, are going to submit the job. So here we we'll submit the job and submit. 
will take some time. It will take some time. Let us wait for it. And here you just click on monitor to see what else we have. Here it is showing when we have submitted. And it is showing error and warning also. But still there is no error, no warning. So I hope our analysis will be completed. Here you can see it is. So the job is completed. You can go to the result. Here you can see this is the first buckling mode. The buckling analysis in find element method. The important parameter is your eigenvalue. Here in a find element buckling load that is equal to eigenvalue. The buckling load we need to calculate by multiplying the we need to multiply eigenvalue and the apply load to get our buckling load. Okay, so here eigenvalue is your 59.604 and we have applied one newton per mm load. So the width of that structure is 30 mm. Okay, so what do we do? We have to multiply 30. 30 so we multiply 30 and 59.604. Okay, eigenvalue into that applied loading. So if you do that, will observe that we are getting a value of 1788.12. That is the, is the buckling load as per our fine element method. That is the buckling load as per our fine element method. And if you want to calculate the buckling load using your theoretical formula, in that case, we know that buckling load that is equal to pi square EI by L square pi square ei by l square okay now l is your effective length so the l is your effective length that depend upon the boundary conditions for our case we use the fourth case for our analysis we have used the fourth case that one end is fixed other end other end also fixed except your loading direction except your loading degree freedom okay so it is to be 0.5 n so our Buckling load as per theoretical formula that is your pi square ei by l square that is to come as 1752 and fe model is providing 1788. So here we can see these two values are very close. Okay, so this is the way we can calculate and verify our point element result with our theoretical result. I hope you get some idea. Thank you. One more thing here you have to keep in your mind that if we if we get some error that some iteration need to increase, in that case you have to go to the step, you have to go to the step, and you have to go to the step, and here you have to increase the number of iteration. Okay, so here I have asked for eigenvalue value, I have asked for eigenvalue two eigenvalues first eigenvalue and second eigenvalue and i have defined vector used per iteration 4 and maximum number of iteration 100 okay so if you observe that there is some error is coming in that case you can increase this number okay by default it used to be 10 you can increase to 50 100 and, and you have to see up to which number of iteration you are getting your result Okay, so this is the way you have to solve this eigenvalue problem, solve this buckling problem, solve this buckling problem in value result. You can verify your result with your theoretical result. One more thing you have to keep in your mind that always you should have your converged result 